everyone, Katie Freeman here with Freeman Furnishings. Uh, have you ever found, or maybe you have just out in your shop, this crazy cool piece of funky wood that you've been meaning to use for a project and you just don't know what to use it for? Well, that's kind of what happened to me. I had this really cool piece of hard maple uh, that I found, and it's got some intricate pathways and, and whatnot through it that Carpenterians put in it. It's just really cool and unique but not something you could turn into a table or any other kind of piece of furniture. So I decided to mess around with some resin and glow in the dark powder and LED lights and turn it into a lamp. Voila! So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I did that, how I took this piece of maple and used resin and glow in the dark powder and LED lights and made this into a lamp. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so I had this funky piece of wood, and I knew I wanted to make a light out of it, but what kind of light to make? Hmm, should I just put some bulbs in it? No. I really like the look of uh, LED lights that I've seen on YouTube and Pinterest, so that's what I decided to go with. In order to make sure that the lamp would sit steady and sturdy on a tabletop, I needed to make the base square in 90 degrees, so I used my Laguna 1412 bandsaw to get that accomplished. Then I needed to have some kind of access point to put the LED lights in. So I'm going to drill a hole here and that is where the LED light strip is going to go. It's a 5 8 inch drill bit, which is rather large, and I needed to go deep, so I had to buy quite a large drill bit to get it done. Then I used my Dremel to kind of clean out all the areas that the ants had left behind. So there's dirt and other debris built in there, so really all I'm doing is just cleaning it off and kind of getting rid of any of the areas that are really super soft and punky. For the hard to reach spots with the Dremel, I went ahead and used a hand file. Then I had to sand. Now before pouring the resin, I only sanded to 120 grit because I know I'm going to have to do more sanding afterwards. All right, now time to prep for the resin pour. Originally, I was going to use melamine to make a box around it, but it's still kind of—it's not a square piece, so I couldn't do that. So I'm using this um, carpet protection film that's kind of like a saran wrap, uh, and I'm wrapping uh, the light in that first. Just trying to control and make sure I don't get a bunch of leaks from the resin when I pour it. Then I'm using painter's tape, uh, not because I'm worried about leaks from the resin, but because I wanted to add strength uh, around the saran wrap, because I know once I pour the resin in, it's gonna bow out. So I pulled pretty tight and hoping that the painter's tape will provide some stability. Now it's time to pour in the resin. I'm using a two-part epoxy resin here that I've tinted blue. And then I'm also adding in some resin that I mixed in some glow worm glow-in-the-dark powder that's supposed to glow uh, like a bluish green.
and I'm alternating because I'm attempting to not have all of the glow in the dark powder just sink to the bottom and maybe get into some of the other crevices and not just go to the open part on the bottom. As I was pouring the resin, I did realize that even with the tape on there, that the sides were starting to bow out. So I decided to stabilize it with putting on some boards and clamping them in place. And then I used the torch to get rid of the bubbles that were surfacing. After it cured, there apparently had been a lot of air trapped in the piece, so there was really a bubble explosion. And in order to save myself time from sanding, I am using the bandsaw here just to get rid of uh, kind of the outer edges where the largest bubbles formed. After the rough cut with the bandsaw, I am using the ArborTech Turbo Plane to provide some shape and texture. Trying to go along with the shape of the grain and also areas of interest that I found after the resin pour. So wasn't a fan of the bubbles, but some of it did provide for some interesting uh, visual aspects. So I wanted to kind of hit on those. Then I'm using the belt sander just to get it uh, somewhat smooth after the bandsaw. I had quite a few machine marks. And then on to final sanding. So here I do sand all the way up to 320 grit to make sure that it's super, super smooth. Next, in order to fill in some areas where the resin had actually cracked or had too big of a void of a bubble, I used just a five minute epoxy resin to fill in with the syringe and it worked really well. I decided after a test run with the LED lights, I wasn't getting the effect I wanted with light going throughout the whole piece. So here I'm cutting slots with the miter saw in order to help bring the light through. Now I'm applying a brush on lacquer finish. I did three coats of lacquer on all four sides in the top and bottom. So overall, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. I did learn some lessons along the way. For instance, do not pour all of your resin at once or you'll get this crazy huge bubble explosion, um, especially since there were all those you know, funky paths from the ants. There was air trapped within the wood. And that came out as the resin uh, uh, started to cure. So in the future, I know do one layer at a time and take my time instead of trying to brush through it. Even given that though, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. And if you like this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so, uh, so you can catch all my videos in the future. Thanks. Again, Katie Freeman with Freeman Furnishings.